Boy string me out here in the shine shed. Uh, first of all, if you've not subscribed, please consider doing so and hit that notification bell to be notified of uploads my live streaming. And if you like this kind of video, give it a thumbs up. We're going to talk about this mandolin hung on my wall probably three years, uh, neglected. It was a gift to me. And uh, I just wanted to kind of put it up. Didn't want to use it. But I think it's high time, as my mom would say, we clean this thing up, put some new strings on it, get some sound out of it. So stick around and stay with me just a minute. Now the first thing we're going to do is take this uh, makeshift strap off. Uh, now I'm not a mandolin player by any means uh i'm not a player really of any sort uh just a whacker but uh these strings i don't know if you can tell it or see it they are super nasty super rusty and rightly so uh they've uh probably never been changed but the action is actually good Action is actually good. Action on this on this mandolin is actually good. Uh, it's a it's a, a a cheap mandolin as far as price, but priceless as far as the gift is concerned. Uh, the frets are still good. It's been played very very little. Uh, Nut looks good. Saddle looks good. There's no cracks. There's no, uh, something's rattling. Oh, that's the, the guard. Yeah, I see it now. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the strings off this thing. I've got some, uh, Gibson guitar polish. We're going to clean this thing up, put new strings on it, tune it, let it sit, and, uh, use this thing because it's, it's of no use to me hanging on the wall. Uh, I've got a lot of irons in the fire. Got a lot of uh, instruments I'm playing, tinkering with, trying to get a better understanding. Uh, but relatively, the keys doesn't slip. It's got kind of a Gibson-shaped headstock. Kind of matches the old Gibson. But... Anywho, let's get the strings off this thing and get to wiping down. Stay with me just a minute. The little winders. Come in handy for work like this. Take them all down. May lubricate them. Uh, uh, tuners. While we got it down, stay with me. Let me get this process out of the way. I don't want this to be a 30 minute video. They had wound the strings super tight. I mean, it's just wrap after wrap after wrap, and, and I don't do that. Uh, whatever your preference is, but that's not my way of doing it. Uh, I want to leave enough slack in case something happens. But I don't screw nothing up, but again, I don't want layer after layer of wrap on that toning peg uh but uh so i went ahead and cut them off i have to oil the fingerboard which looks to be mahogany of some sort it looks good the frets look good uh but as you can see the strings are Super rusted, nasty, black, corroded, 
I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. I wished it would, but anywho. Went ahead and relieve the pressure off the string. Next thing I've got to do is get this string cover off and it slides off. So I'll get that off. Stay with me just a moment. We'll get this jewel off and keep moving forward. Yeah, from the looks of it, it's never been <laughs> serviced. <clears throat> maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. But I had to take a piece of leather or a glove or a, you can take a, a washcloth or whatever and apply pressure to the front of it and it should slip right off. Just slip right off. But we're down to the uh, bare necessities. Let's get to cleaning. Let me give you a quick shot of the end of the strings. They're just looped. They just hook around brass pins under the cover. A lot of companies color code now. Uh, you can see the colors. Match colors. Makes it simplified. You break a string or whatever the case may be. Uh, because when you get down to the uh, secondary strings, it's kind of hard to determine the string's diameter just by looking at it. But I'm going back with uh, D'Addario, light gauge. We're going to clean this thing up first, so stay with me. Let's see if we can get this bridge or this rather pick guard off. Uh, might be able to, might not. Look like somebody's put a a nut, I believe, on the back side of this thing, which is going to be interesting. So I might just take it apart here. Leave out there because it's going to be super hard for me to uh, hold that nut and get that put back in place. Yeah, that's better. Maybe that's a little better. Maybe that's a little bit smarter. I like using the uh, the uh, big bright orange. Uh, washcloths, where I'm from, we call them wash rags. For the simple fact is, that is just back down right there. Uh, you drop anything on there, uh, easy to spot you with the filler. So let me get this off. Stay with me just a minute. Now, I'm by no means a looter. I'm not trying to be. I'm just trying to clean up an old mandolin. A uh, gift that was given to me by a real good friend of mine. Uh, but when it comes to even changing strings on your guitar, you may have done it a thousand times. Uh, banjo, mandolin, whatever. You fiddle, your violin. 
Uh, but something as simple as changing strings could end up in a costly repair. Even though you may have done it a thousand times. Uh, rushing into something can cost you dearly on your favorite instrument. But uh, my advice is to do what you're capable of doing. Don't go headlong into something that you're not capable of doing. And uh, if you don't feel confident, uh, stop for just a minute and then consider what you're doing. But nevertheless, we're going to wipe this down with just a cotton cloth, washcloth. I about had it, I believe. But uh, we're going to wipe it down real good, clean it up real good. And I'm going to show you how. Uh, if you don't know Stumac, which I'm sure anybody that deals with guitars knows Dan. And uh, I'm going to show you what Dan recommends for me to clean this fingerboard, this fretboard. Stay with me. Never spritz any kind of chemical. I don't care if it's guitar polish or if it's recommended, uh, whatever. Never apply it directly to, look at that, never to apply it directly to the wood. Uh, spritz you uh, a good clean cloth. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I want to lubricate this saddle as well. Check for any damage. Places that you can't normally get to, like underneath this pick guard. this thing cleaned up I'll be right back with you I'm just thinking it it strikes me kind of odd that I would have this on the wall for that many years and uh, how pretty it looks just a little bit of care No damage whatsoever on this thing. That's amazing. <laughs> Those strings were awful. I mean, literally awful. Let me get this cleaned up. Stay right with me. Pretty. Unreal. Let's get the pit guard cleaned, get it installed, and we're gonna uh, hydrate the fretboard. Now that we have the pit guard installed, look at that. Looks like a totally different mandolin. I'm telling you. Beautiful. Uh, I want to talk to you about hydrating the fretboard. Uh, I was looking at several different things, watched some Stumac videos, uh, some of the things that they use, some things they recommend, some things they don't recommend. Everything that I have researched as far as being able to take care of your fretboard, as long as there's no fret damage, and these are, are A1 there's not, not even, I don't even think this thing's even been played, really. Uh, probably just handed down. But uh, everything that I researched, all the ingredients are 100% mineral oil. A lot of people use lemon, uh, boiled linseed oil. Uh, 
But you you look at the, the price difference and the ingredients. Uh, I'm after what works. I'm not after a brand name. I want to stick with what works. And 100% mineral oil. Now listen to me. You don't need to hydrate this saturated soap. Uh, even your Gibson or your Martin guitar. Even your bass guitar. Uh, a couple times a year. Make a note somewhere of the total service of that instrument. I do. But uh, just good old mineral oil. And you know me. For those that's watched my videos from the wood shop, never apply anything. Look at that. Look at that. Bringing the fretboard back to life. But like I said, everything that I have researched has been 100% uh, mineral oil. A couple times a year on your favorite instrument. If you have to clean the frets, polish them. Uh, I'm not going to take the process of stringing it, but I'm going to give you a sound bite. Look at the difference in that. That is freaking phenomenal. The teardrop mandolin, excellent condition, excellent condition, I'm telling you, no cracks, no warps, let me get this thing strung up, and we'll give you a little sound bite. Pop access. You don't have to saturate it. Just enough to lubricate. It'll, it'll, it'll seep into that wood grain. Look at that. Look at that. I'll clean this, and I'll clean the cover once we get it strung up. Stay with me. 